Today we meet Monkey Mom, a city girl who moved to the bush. Life was good, but then COVID hit. Like so many, her life came to an abrupt stop. And to chat to us about her time spent as a volunteer looking after baby monkeys is Deborah Patton. Deborah, welcome to The Loft. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. Now, Debbie, please may you tell us about how you earned the title Monkey Mom. Well, um, I saw an advert on a Facebook post looking for um, a volunteer mom for the Vervet Monkey Foundation based in Zanin. And I applied and to my surprise, I got the job. And now here I am and it, my job day involves wandering around, washing bottles, filling bottles, making bottles, delivering them for babies and basically just taking care of all little orphans on the, on the sanctuary. Oh, my heart just melts thinking of how your daily activities look like because those little monkeys are absolutely adorable and are truly something to be treasured. Now, Debra, you went from a corporate job to living in, to, in the bush. Can you tell us about life before COVID hit and how you went after your passion? Um, sure. I have two beautiful kids. I was a single mom. I brought them up on my own. And in 2014, uh, my daughter left to go and work in America, and my son was accepted at UCT. So I thought, well, they kind of don't need me anymore. Um, I was working in advertising, high-paid job, lots of stress. But I thought, you know, I need to do something for myself, something, more, something less pressurized, something I'd enjoy because they didn't need me anymore. And again, through Facebook, I saw a random post about a owner of a game reserve looking for a PA. And it turned out it was Francoise Alhalbi, um, wife of Lawrence Anthony, who wrote The Elephant Whisperer, um, based at Tula Tula. And she also hired me as her PA. And I went from being scared of pigeons to go and live in the bush. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was hectic. I mean, snakes everywhere, rhinos, elephants. My second duty day on duty as a PA, my job was to help bury a crocodile that had passed away. <laughs> On your second day, Debra. My second day. Yes. What an initiation. Talk to the manager and just make sure it's buried deep um, so the scavengers can't get at it. And that's how my life began. So literally from screaming like most women when we see a spider um, <laughs> to um, having mumbers in my bedroom and rhinos trying to meet me. And yeah, wow. it, was, it was amazing. And I spent nearly nine months there um, and then... Went back to Cape Town for a little bit, but then headed back to the bush, and I worked in a reserve near Kruger Park. Um, again, getting chased. I had to carry a broom to go from office to the kitchen in case the ostriches were around, because the male ostrich would chase me. But if I had a broom, I looked taller, so I just hold it above my head, <laughs> and he'd leave me alone. So, Deborah, so it was really, it was a wonderful life. Um, and then I ended up in St. Lucia. And that's where I was before um, COVID hit. I was working for a small little company, organizing snorkeling trips to Cape Vidal, um, bushwalk safaris and things, and having a really good life. I was very happy and content. Describe how quickly, though, life changed for you once COVID hit. Uh, it was in a day. Um, 24th of March, um, we got notification of the impending lockdown. 25th of March, I was called into the office and said, sorry, they have to retrench me with immediate effect. Um, all bookings were cancelled, no tourists coming, nothing they could do, no money, no savings. Um, they said I could stay in the flat till the end of, of April, so I had one month's notice. But other than that, final pay was in March. And yeah, that was it. Deborah, I can only imagine how life had to change at a blink of an eye, from the busy, bustling city life to the humble bush life. And now you are happily living at the foundation. So what have been some of the physical changes that you've had to adapt to since being at the foundation? Um, I think my biggest one is, is the physicality of the job. So I'm walking about 10 to 12 kilometers every day. I think I probably walked three kilometers or four kilometers at most before. So it's a very physical job. It gets quite hot here in the mornings. It's cold when you start. And then the food. It's a vegan lifestyle. I'm a Big Mac and milkshake girl. Um, uh, so <laughs> I'm missing my cappuccinos and my teas. I can't quite get my head around soy milk. So yeah, that's it's the diet and the physicality. Yeah, definitely. I feel you, sis. I felt you there. Now, you have come to learn so much about animals that you're working with. So what would you like to share with the rest of South Africa about these beautiful animals? Before, as, 
like everybody, I thought of monkeys maybe as sort of a pest um, at the guest houses where I worked it and, and, and I had to chase them away from the breakfast table, etc. But we do have to realize we're in the, we're in their property. We came into where they're living in their areas um, and built up. And they're just trying to survive. And we just need to learn to live together with them and make a plan and, and, and be, be peaceful and not see them as pests. They're beautiful, loving and caring creatures. And I see that every day, just how they interact and... There's nothing cuter than a baby running up to you for its bottle and squeaking with appreciation. It's just, you know, so we need, yeah, we just need to learn to live together with our animals and enjoy them for what they are. Mm. Thank you for spreading that message and helping all those animals that you connect with daily at the foundation. We appreciate all of your help and your love. And shout out to your two children, your human children, who allowed mommy to go chase her passion regardless. We appreciate you for reminding us that it's never too late to chase those dreams. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thanks for touching. Bye. I mean, South Africa, would you have the guts and the courage to do the same? Do as Deborah and stop it all and touch Mother Nature again. Head over to our social media platforms and let us know how this story has touched you. Head over to Facebook, Twitter or Instagram and use that hashtag Afternoon Express.